God made the earth emerge. He created volcanoes and filled the lands with herbs, flowers, and trees. He populated the waters with many kinds of fish and other animals, such as ducks and collar parrots. And finally, he created two human beings, Adam and Eve, who had two sons, Cain and Abel. Then it happened that Cain, jealous and envious of his own brother, stained himself with a crime killing him, and God condemned him. Later on, God was tired of the wicked actions that men committed every day and decided to send on earth the flood and to save only one man who was devoted to him, Noah. After Noah built the ark, God ordered him to first take on board a pair of every species of animal. Then he told Noah to take on board his wife, Sarah, their relatives, and the few men who had helped in building the ark. The flood went on for 40 days and 40 nights, and Noah every day would send a dove or a raven to look for dry land, but every time it would return with nothing in its beak. But one fine morning, the dove came back with an olive twig in its beak, and Noah finally understood that the flood was over and the waters had withdrawn. After everyone got off the ark, life on Earth started again very quickly for animals and men. Noah, Sarah, their relatives, and all of the men saved from the flood, in recognizing God's greatness and magnificence, thanked him with prayers and sacrifices. The sons of Noah and Sarah, with their parents' blessings and permission, took their ways to lay out the foundation of new cities. The great number of caravans which roamed far and wide looking for fertile lands had to travel many kilometers before reaching a place considered suitable for people's needs. These caravans were primarily composed of women and children. During these long trips, which could last months or even years, they had to take along all sorts of supplies, and the weight of these supplies often slowed down their trip, making it extremely uncomfortable and dangerous. But the biggest danger for caravans came from the many thieves along the way who would plunder cities and villages and obviously looked out for caravans to plunder as well. Bandits! Bandits! We won't let them get to us! <sighs> ah! 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 Bandits! Assassins! Don't let them get us! Bandits!
him, boys. Go away, sissies! You mustn't let anyone escape. They won't, woman. <laughs> Their gods are stronger than ours. They know how to fight, and they'll cut us into pieces. We should let them go. Let's go! I'm your leader now! Let's get out of here! A man called Hera, with his people and his pregnant wife, was also looking for a fertile land where to settle down and build a city. Wake up, Terra. The sky is clouded over. Where? Right ahead of you. Fantastic. Finally, we'll have as much water as we want. Anyway, it's better to climb that hill if we don't want to get our feet soaked, isn't it? So, uh, come on, let's go. Let's go up that hill. Son, he's a gift from your wife. Take him in your arms. <laughs> this is the child of Terah, my son, and I shall call him Abraham, which means of the Most High God, so that he grows strong, brave, and fair, and his progeny will be as numerous as the stars, to shine upon men as the sun after the storm, to shine in the night like the morning star. The child of Terah is called Abram. Eat now. Listen, I'm looking for the camp of Terra the Merchant. Do you know it? Do you know where it is, boy? Certainly. If you keep going along the course of the river, you'll find him behind the reeds. Thank you very much. Are you one of the people who live in the camp? I, Abraham, son of Terra. All right, see you later then, boy.
Three days have passed and we are still negotiating. To buy 15 camels, 15 horses, 30 sheep and 5 rams, you're asking a price that's too high. I want to pay the right price for them. Can't you bring down the price on these animals at all? We don't have that much money. The money I ask is not too much for all these animals that I've grown with my own sweat and toil, so I think that you must pay it. You must. But you are too expensive. It's an honest price, an honest price. Huh? Push it! Push it! You're come on, Abraham, come sleep, on! Sahar! 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 You have a brave child, Terra. But you are too demanding and you are asking too high a price for that livestock. What you want to pay me is too little. I'm not in a hurry, my friend. I will return here in a week's time. You won't find me. The caravan will already be far from here. No, Terra, no. Don't leave here. I will give you a good reason not to do so. useless young Abram you are well bound but you are lucky you have a father who loves you and who will give us his livestock and hers to see you free and alive calm down I will do anything to get back Abram anything anything have to move fast, really fast, so that they don't try and kill Abraham like a sheep. Are you picking up the scent of Abraham? Father? He went to the canine tooth with the camels and the herd to pay for your ransom. But there's no need to pay ransom anymore. I freed myself. And with his help. What are you all waiting for? Take weapons and camels. We will attack them at the canine tooth. They are only bandits. Let's go. Let's go, he came alone. Huh? All right, good job, merchant. You kept your word. Take whatever you want, but give me Abraham back. Where is he? You'd promised me. I see that you are reasonable now. You will have Abraham back, but this is a lesson for next time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 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 
I don't think there will be a next time for you, coward. Who, who are they, huh? There's lots of them! But what do they want from us? They want you. How did you manage to get away from the cave? A friend came and freed me. <laughs> Your wickedness made you our slave, and I will sell you in the first market on my way, even if they pay me little money. We were right on time. You're not a child anymore, you're a leader. No doubt there is a god watching over you. So what? Six well-grazed camels, six horses, eight rams, and one hundred sheep with their dog. In addition to that, a spun tunic of gold for the groom, and clothes, mats, dresses, and soft laces for the bride. Plus a mirror, a pair of scissors, and a sword. A beautiful sword. My servants in the city of Ur will build a small house for the bride and groom on the riverbank. So what do you think of that, Terra? You couldn't do better, brother, could you? I'm very glad, because Abraham is an excellent young man, and I love my daughter Sarai. She is the light of my eyes. This is Sarai, the daughter of Afia the Merchant. I, Abraham, son of Terah, take this woman, your daughter Sarai, as my wife. Many years have passed since that happy day. Then, one day, Terah decided to leave Ur of the Chaldeans. He took along with him to the land of Canaan, Abraham, his son, along with his wife Sarai and his nephew, Lot. But on his way, he came upon the city of Haran, where he dwelt, and soon his business flourished. Therefore, he decided to remain in Haran until the end of his days. However, he died in sorrow, because his daughter-in-law still had not given him what he desired most, a grandson. You returned here again. Yet the god already knows your desire. We've waited for a child for years. We have drunk decocks of all the grasses and plants of the earth. We have repeated the requests you taught us every day. We have paid all the due offerings and more, but we didn't get anything, anything. The wish of the god cannot be treated with violence. You will certainly get the child you desire. When will it be? When? Don't get mad. Today I brought with me my wife Sarai, so the god could see her and hear her voice. I beg you, red and powerful god, help me. I want to give a child to Abraham. Stop! Your time is up. Leave now. What can a stone god do? His heart is of stone. Surely. How can he feel sorry for us? 
A god of stone with a heart of stone would never be able to give him a child. Deep inside, Abraham knew that his god must have had a living heart. Therefore, every day more and more, Abraham started talking to his god. He was certain the god could hear him, and at times, he even heard the god's voice. One night, after his prayers, he could swear he heard the god talk to him. Abraham. Is that you, my lord? It is I, Abraham. You know what your servant desires from the bottom of his heart. Yes, Abraham. I read what's in your heart. Tell me, my lord, what to do. I don't care if I have to wait longer. Just give me a child. Abraham, go out of thy land and from thy kindred and from thy father's house to the land that I will show thee. And I will bless you and make you great. You'll be a blessing. And I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. Your promise confuses me, my lord. But if you choose for me this destiny, I will obey you, lord. Bless you, my lord. 